Tobacco use causes more than 400,000 deaths in America each year. Though the effects are not as clearly defined for chewing tobacco and snuff, there are many who are clearly convinced that the cancers they or their loved ones contracted were caused by their habitual use of these products, which we categorize as smokeless or spit tobacco. In Texas, 26,000 people will die this year as a result of tobacco use. This is more than AIDS, crack, heroin, cocaine, alcohol, car accidents, fire, and murder combined. Hi, I'm Dr. Laverne Hollyfield, Program Director for the Spit Tobacco Prevention Network, also known as Stoppin'. Stoppin' is a collaborative effort of organizations that have united in order to decrease and ultimately eliminate spit tobacco use in Texas. There are families across the nation whose lives have been negatively impacted by using spit tobacco. We've asked one Texas family to come and share their story with you. Hey, my name is Tara Thigpen, and this is my father, Warren Thigpen, who was diagnosed with cancer in 1998 from the use of spit tobacco. I started using spit tobacco when I was in the sixth grade. So, what is that, 11, 12 years old? According to the 1998 Texas Youth Tobacco Survey, sponsored by the Texas Department of Health, approximately 6% or more than 56,000 public middle school students used spit tobacco. Among high school students, more than 9% or 95,000 students used spit tobacco products. We wanted to know if Mr. Thigpen was aware of the potentially harmful effects of using spit tobacco. No, I didn't know. I had no idea this stuff was bad for me when I started using it. I, I knew it was better for me than cigarettes were, or I thought it was, so that was one of the reasons. Spit tobacco contains 28 known cancer-causing agents, in addition to thousands of other dangerous chemicals that affect the heart, respiratory system, oral cavity, and other parts of the body. In its early stages, oral cancer is painless and looks a lot like other non-cancerous lesions. Because of this, this type of cancer is most often not diagnosed until it has progressed to a more advanced stage. In fact, only about 50% of the people who are diagnosed with oral cancer live for more than five years after they are diagnosed. We asked Mr. Thigpen to describe the events that led to the discovery of the cancer and to share his experiences including surgery, post-operative treatment, any noticeable changes, and his prognosis for a cure. In June of 1998, had a bad cold, sore throat and stuff. Uh, so I went to the doctor. Uh, he checked me out and I had a, a little swelling in the lymph node here on the side of my neck. Well, we just attributed that to the fact that I was, you know, cold and sinuses were infected a little bit and stuff. So the lymph nodes were swollen, got on some antibiotic, uh, got over my cold and stuff, relatively short period of time but the knot stayed there. Uh, didn't hurt, didn't bother me, so I, you know, didn't worry about it too much. In uh, the fall of that year, probably sometime in October, I woke up in the middle of the night with a real sharp pain here in my shoulder. Uh, I mean, it hurt. Uh, I mean, I laid on the floor, I got in the recliner, I got up against the wall trying to get this pain to go away, try, trying to figure out, well, I hadn't lifted anything that day or anything, and it was really hurting me bad. Finally, I just was back here rubbing, and I reached to this knot on my neck and just kind of grabbed on it, and when I kind of got my fingers around it, the pain in my shoulder went away. That's when I knew there was, you know, this wasn't right. And I remember it was Friday, November the 13th, 1998, when he called me and said, Warren, he said, do you have cancer? He said, do you have 
uh, squamous cell carcinoma. And I said, okay. I said, what's the lymph? He said, no, it's not lymphoma. And I said, well, is that good or bad? He said, well, they're all bad. But he said, the thing about it, if it's the squamous cell carcinoma, he said, it did not start in your lymph nodes. It started somewhere else, in, you know, in your body. And he couldn't, he never found anything else. So we went in for outpatient surgery uh, where they could really go down my throat and look. And that's when he found the tumor way on the back of my tongue. Uh, and that's when he, you know, it was concluded then that this cancer started there, spread to my lymph nodes, but the reason it started there was from using spit tobacco. I went through, it's about seven weeks of, of radiation treatments, which was seven weeks, the worst weeks in my life, uh, going every day, you know, during the Monday through Friday. Uh, I lost all appetite because I couldn't taste food. I love banana pudding. I love coconut pie. I still can't hardly eat those things. After I'd been in radiation, they were nasty. Anything sweet tasted nasty to me. Other things really had no taste. Today still, a lot of the sweet stuff doesn't taste right. I'll get a piece of coconut pie, I mean, stuff I used to love, and I'll take a bite of it, and I get mad because it doesn't taste like it's supposed to. At the hospital after the radiation, uh, thank goodness, the tumor on the back of my tongue disappeared. So they just had to go in this, this shrunk down, my lymph node, you could barely tell it was a knot. Uh, I went in there, they did surgery, removed the lymph nodes on both sides, uh, took my jugular vein out on this side. Most of the nerves that control this shoulder on, on this side were taken out. Uh, I still don't have full use of this arm. Uh, Probably never will. Just new nerves are having to take over and they just don't know how to control things like I used to. Like I said, I'm still not out of the woods yet. The doctor tells me that if I can make it till uh, February of 2001, which will be two years after the uh, surgery, if it doesn't come back, he'll declare me cured of this cancer. After having gone through this experience, we wanted to know if Mr. Thigpen had a message for others who use spit tobacco or who are thinking about using it. Don't use spit tobacco. I've used it for about 30 years. Uh, like I said, the first many years of it, I you know had no idea that it was hurting me. At the end, I knew, I mean, I was, you know, the information that come out, this stuff is bad for you. Uh, I knew I was addicted to it. You know, I couldn't go without it. Uh, but other folks get cancer. You don't get it. Other people get that. This is the stuff you read about that happens to somebody else. The worst thing, or, or one of the worst things that, that can happen to you is to have a doctor tell you you've got cancer. It's changed my life. I mean, I look at things completely different now than I used to. Uh, whenever you listen to the radio or watch TV or read a newspaper, there's stories about cancer everywhere. They were out there before. I just, I, I didn't listen, I didn't pay attention. Now it's, you can't, you know, any magazine you look at, it's, there's, there's cancer that, you know, we're just not listening. Folks, listen. This stuff is out there. It can get you. 